Microsoft's mission is to empower all the people in the world to achieve more, and that includes the one billion people in the world who are disabled. The research that we're presenting at CHI all centers around the issue of image understanding, uh, which is especially important in this day and age. Billions of images every day are uploaded to the web and social media platforms and apps, and only a small percentage of this imagery actually is captioned for access by people who have a screen reader read content allowed to them. So the Caption Crawler project addresses the challenge that most uh, websites, the alt text for an image that will be read aloud by a screen reader uh, has to be provided by the content author, and that many content authors either have missing or inadequately descriptive alt text. And the key insight here is really that many images appear in more than one place on the web. So for example, if there's a photo of Mount St. Helens that appears in a certain uh, Wikipedia article, that same photo of Mount St. Helens might appear on a travel page about Washington State. And if, let's say, the travel page didn't provide an alternative text for the image, perhaps the Wikipedia article did, and we could grab that existing human-authored caption and inject it into the page where it's missing for the same photo. So we built a browser plugin that performs this function in real time and examined properties such as how well we could perform in terms of what percentage of images that are missing alt text that we could backfill in this way. So for example, one of our systems looks at making a spatialized alt text because today many people are accessing uh, the web and apps and digital documents on tablets or smartphones which are touch enabled. So rather than simply having a, a single description for the whole image, instead we have parts of the caption that have spatialized information about them for where in the photo they occur. And so a user could run their finger over the surface of their touch-enabled device and hear different parts of the caption spoken aloud depending on what is specifically under their finger. A person wearing a Tigger costume signing an autograph book. And that can help someone build up a better spatial understanding about their relationships and locations of specific entities within an image. So teenagers are a really interesting group to study because teens in general are early tech adopters, are very you know, passionate about and fluent with technology, and teens are also much more susceptible to social pressures than adults, so there's a lot of peer pressure to use the same tech that all of your friends are using. Together with our intern, Cindy Bennett, from the University of Washington, uh, we conducted interviews with a group of teenagers who are low vision. So they were all uh, legally blind, but typically retained some small amount of vision, different for each person. And of course, we found that these teenagers, like their sighted peers, want to use today's popular social media apps like Snapchat and Instagram and Facebook. And they have to overcome a lot of barriers in order to do that. And understanding um, what the challenges they face are can help us design better technologies. So for example, we saw that teens with low vision have a lot of difficulty taking selfies, which is of course vital to participate in society as a teenager today to take cool selfies of yourself. Uh, but it's very difficult to position the camera correctly and understand if the image is framed properly from a distance if you have low vision. We also saw that uh, teens with uh, low vision used filters in apps like Instagram in really surprising ways. So typically someone who is sighted would use a filter to create a certain aesthetic look to their image before they shared it. But what we saw the teenagers doing was using filters on their own images and also on friends' images that they would download in order to filter the image so that it had, for example, a color contrast that made it easier for them to perceive based on their particular visual disability. And that suggests a lot of really opportunity, interesting opportunities for technology design, like could you specifically create new kinds of filters that would actually be very effective for particular individuals or particular conditions? I think one of the challenges we've seen relating to image description in this work and some of our prior research is that people who are visually impaired are very interested in many types of details about an image that current AI systems can't yet produce, uh, particularly subjective details. Uh, so for example, in the context of social media, if someone shares an image, I might want to understand if the image is funny or not and why it's funny 
or I might want to understand something about the aesthetics of the image. Is it a artistically meaningful image for some reason. And these types of more subjective values are not yet something that our current AI systems are being trained to do, uh, but that I think they will be able to tackle uh, five, 10 years out from now.